So here's a side-by-side -side. Um, Grenadier and a 08 uh, 200. There, I've tried to park them hub to hub. So we should get a, a good understanding of the of the size. I mean, it's obvious that the Grenadier is much taller. Not just in terms of ground clearance, but also on the height of the actual vehicle. And it is a mission to get in. I strongly recommend side steps. Um, it's not easy to get in without them. Mine are still on their way. So this is the 28570. Mud terrain on the stock steelies until my rims come in. The Grenadier is shorter. Um, a little bit, I guess, that much. And you can see that in the in the boot space. But I, it feels pretty spacious, and I think it makes up for it because of the height. In terms of width, I, uh, you know, on paper, the Grenadier is narrower. It doesn't feel that way, to be honest, once you're inside. But yeah, just wanted to show you around. I'll show you the boot space. I got this lockable cubby. I think it's fantastic. Um, I got it specifically to put my son's stuff when I pick him from school. Because he schools in a forest, so... Um, yeah, let's get in here. Doors are solid. They're like vault doors. Um, and I love that. And then the sound when you, when you shut them. So, comes with a bag for the safari windows. Actually really nice. This flooring is, is way better than I was expecting because online it's like cheap plastic. It's gonna scratch a lot, but you know, you give it a scratch and then you just rub on it. it comes right off. I think it's pretty decent. With a good set of cargo mats, you'll be good. Um, the interior is just phenomenal. And uh, in terms of the, the rear roll, I actually like that this doesn't recline any further than that. It gives you a nice flat back, no wasted space when you're building in whatever you are. I've got a fridge coming in, a 55 liter, a couple of other things, and then most of the other stuff's gonna go on the roof. Um, getting a roof rack, a three quarter roof rack, so that I can have the, the Safari windows operational. And here's something interesting that you won't see online. There's been loads of reviews about how, you know, it's a four-seater for sure. And it's not a comfortable five-seater. I think it's... I, I, I don't know what version of the vehicle people are looking at, but... This is a trial master. I've got two massive car seats here, okay? And... That's more than enough for a full-size adult. Uh, and I actually tried it. It's actually more room than my cruiser for some reason, right? So I, I don't understand that perspective. And you can see how much legroom. So that, that seat's set to me. I'm about 180 centimeters and that's super comfortable. There's more than enough space for me, a full-size adult, to walk, to walk in with the car seat there. Um, So I'm not sure about that. I, there's also been a lot of talk about this. I quite like it. I'd probably get some wrap to protect it because I do agree it's going to get scratched. The rest of the stuff I think is great. I'm, I'm, I'm actually super glad <clears throat> that I didn't get the leather. That was something I was debating a lot. And I finally went with uh, the utility trim. And it's anything but utility, to be honest. It's what I mean is it's not cheap. It's it's brilliant. I love it. I love the look. I love the feel of it. I'm I'm obviously gonna get seat covers done. But I think that was a great choice. I saw the leather uh, on a prototype and I think I would have been disappointed to be honest. So yeah, I I, I got the utility trim. Uh, I didn't get the heated seats because this is Africa. We don't need it. Um, 
this was a mistake. I paid 70 euro for a smoker's pack, thinking that I would get an additional port. But I didn't, because this port exists regardless. And all I got was the lighter and this cup ashtray for 70 euro. And that was definitely not worth it. I do like the charging point in there. It would have been nice if they had one more out here. You know, is it a big deal? Not really. I'm going to get a splitter anyway. Um, now for this. Well, I'll go, I'll go here first. I think these are great. So on the driver's side, you get the tool set. And there's still plenty of space for other stuff. More than enough, to be honest. Um, and that's wonderful because inside... You're more limited, right? Especially if you're a smoker, which I'm not, but... <laughs> um, so it's, it's great to have that underseat storage and you can, you know, you can reach it here. You'd have to open the door to get anything out. On the door, you've got uh, two spaces. I think they're, they're decent. Large bottle can go here. My phone fits comfortably here. It's like, a, I think it's six inches or seven inches tall. Um, this is great on paper. I haven't used it yet. I find this a bit too narrow to put anything meaningful. But time will tell, I guess, for keys. Uh, apart from that, the glove box. So I got a cigar here. Obviously, my uh, very kind dealer got me one. I thought that was incredibly uh, thoughtful. <laughs> and... Um, so yeah, it's 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 way smaller uh, than than a Land Cruiser, uh, the glove compartment. But to be honest, I don't really have anything of of, of use in mind anyway. Uh, you just tend to fill this space with stuff. But I think you'll be able to fit a, a pack of Kleenex, some sanitizer, some you know meds, whatever, and that's all you'd really need. I, I probably wouldn't keep the owner's manual in here. You'll get it electronically anyway. Uh, Safari windows are phenomenal. I'm super glad I got them. I will be looking into some kind of covering though, and additional protection. This this protection is great. It keeps the heat out, but it doesn't keep the sun out. And um, I personally am probably the only African that doesn't like the sun. So I will look for a way to minimize how much sun actually comes in, especially when you're driving. And if you're like me and you don't like it on your face, <clears throat> Apart from that, I got the compass, which I think is super cool. It's actually really cool. I love it. Uh, it's a great design. Apart from that, I got saddle, which again, I guess it comes down to personal choice, but I think it's phenomenal. And you get the handlebar here too. I am not sure about this guy. I think it's... To be honest, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I found it. I find it a bit complex to use. Um, dealer says I'll get used to it. I am better today than I was yesterday. You got to press a button here to get it into drive or reverse. Uh, for park, you got to press the act this actual button, and uh, you know, with time, I will get used to it. Although my uncle, who's driven a range and and which is similar, got it on the first try. So I guess it's it's just a bit. It takes a bit of getting used to, so hopefully that'll happen. I did get the the lockable console here, which I think I showed you. Um, you know, it's small, but sufficient, I'd say. I'm probably biased because I love the car so much, but I I I I, I think it's phenomenal in every way. I really do. There are a few things here and there, like when I got it, this um, one of the clips here was out. Uh, just pushed it in. It's no big deal. And now, now for the big one that <clears throat> you know everyone talks about. So, driver's side. This footrest has been discussed to no end. To be honest, it it didn't scare me because I've got a Jimny as well, and it's got something similar. So I came in expecting the worst. However, that's me comfortably in my driving position. 
and there's more than enough room to left foot. But more than that, it's, it's an extremely comfortable position, at least for me. So I don't get what the drama about this footrest is. Um, I really don't. I actually like it. Uh, steering, it's telescopic. It is heavy. This thing is, is massive. I mean, it's, it's really heavy. It goes in, up, down. It's telescopic. I can't do it with one hand, but it works a treat. And I have no complaints about that. <clears throat> I think the sun visors could be bigger. There is, there is, um, you know, sunshine that comes in from here. And because of how vertical this is, um, it, uh, it lets the sun shine in a lot. So yeah, I would, I'll be looking at getting some kind of a, a sun protection from right across here because this is where it gets, um, gets tough to drive with. <clears throat> uh, I got the high load auxiliary. I've got lights coming in. I got an LED bar. I've got two, uh, two different types of bars for the front. And I've got three other bars, camp lights uh, on the roof rack. So all that's gonna come in here. I've also got a couple of extra power points coming in. Uh, I'm not sure how to, how to wire up some of the, uh, the LED bars I've got because they have a backlight. But we'll see when they get here. Um, apart from that, this activates the spot. I find this a little bit inconvenient. Um, but again, I, I guess it might take some, some getting used to. The climate control is great. You know, you're right, you're, you're really close to it. So, so I, I think it works perfectly well. Um, to be honest, I think it's better than my 200 because it's right in your face. It's kind of like a, again, like a Jimny, you know, a Jimny's, you're really close up to the vents, so it's, uh, you know, you get cool really fast. I think my cruiser is just a little big for the power of that system. Right, so that's that. And I'll show you, see, I'll show you one thing I don't like. Let's go around. And I'm not sure why this is, well, this is the, I showed you the box. I'm not sure why this is that way, but if you want to pop the hood, if you wanted to pop the hood, you're gonna to come to the passenger. It's two pull, which is great. Pops open, but I find that incredibly inconvenient if you're the only one in the car. Actually, not, and you want to put like wiper fluid or whatever, or you want to check it at least. Uh, I get that you don't need to to check engine oil and stuff because it's all controlled on this. Uh, on the screen, but still, it's it's not smart to have that there. You got another one of these coveys in here. Um, plenty of space in there. And then the rest is exactly the same as, as the driver. You got the auxiliary power points. These are great. I've got, I'm gonna get them all plugged up. I can't open them yet. But I'm sure the dealer opened them really easy. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I was doing it wrong. So it's a simple plug and play. No issues with that. And you just lock it in and you're good to go. All right, so that's done. I've seen some accessories being um, mounted onto here and then it comes down here. So that, those are pretty strong. Uh, I'm gonna go check out some stuff um, in Germany and Switzerland at the end of next week. The wheels don't actually stick out. Uh, maybe slightly. Actually, no, they're, they're flush. They're flush with the fender. With the 285.70 on the stock wheels. And I'm getting a, about a 38 offset, so I would imagine coming out an inch. And so it'll sit right about there. Which I want, and I like. Get this guy open. Engine bay. I'm not going to pretend to know how to take apart a car because I don't. Um, but yeah, that's the engine bay. I think it's it's beautiful. If 
I wish I had more video footage of uh, what I saw yesterday when I walked. I, I had a walk through of the underneath of the vehicle. It's spectacular, and I've been under my 200, and I've seen it too. Uh, but yeah, that's the engine bay. Uh, it's a three-liter twin-turbo BMW diesel, and so this thing is you. You know, I drove around yesterday with a warning light the whole day because I couldn't figure it out. You drop it the first time, and then you gotta you gotta get a second lock in. I saw that second lock there. There we go, and now it's locked in. So I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong with that. You can explain. I think it's really good to have the double lock. Steel bumper. This is a plastic cap that comes off and you mount the rhubar on here, but it's steel underneath. I am getting a rhubar. Um, I think that's critical. It looks good. I didn't get a winch. I, I just don't, I've never used one and needed one. So I don't think it's worth having that. I was working out to like 6,000 euro or something. I don't think it's worth it at present at least I'll show you in here which it's impressive like it's fully guarded up it's got multiple pieces that's beautiful it's clean I saw a review about things hanging out all over I think that's nonsense I haven't seen anything like it uh, sorry this guy's dirty but just compare this is a 200 right I guess it would need to be cleaned up to be fair, but just look at the difference. You know, it's exposed right there. And take a look at the Grenadier. It's fully covered up, sealed. And then you got the mounting and the shock. Ah, uh, sorry, the spring. Right. There was also talk about this being a mud trap, the, the guard at the front. And having seen it, from underneath yesterday, I'm not sure. I, I think it has adequate slope to drain and I don't think there's a way for mud to, to get in there easily. Um, you've got the, the mesh on the front, you've got the toe points where there's holes underneath. So I don't see how you'd get that as a trap. Um, ground clearance compared to the 200, I'm going to do slightly better a steering damper is right there though it's super bulky but you know it could still fail quite easily you hit it at the wrong angle having said that it's a it's a couple of bolts not difficult to to replace um yeah so so i guess that's that's my first proper Walk around. If there's something I'm missing, let me know. Something you'd like to see, let me know. Just showing you quickly what the Land Cruiser's boot space looks like. You know, with the with, this is a seven seater. So with this, with the seats, I would say the width is about equal to the Grenadier. It's definitely longer. Maybe 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters longer. But it's not as high. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Thank you guys. Subscribe, like, support. Um, I'll talk more about the build and what I have in mind. And we'll do a couple more comparisons. And I've got some driving videos on road as well. So I'll post those as soon as possible. Rear bumper is also steel. My tow ball's coming. And that's it. Oh, this. <clears throat> so I've got a camp table coming, um, which I can see how it would fit right here. I think it's good. Right now I've got a, a kit in here, first aid kit. Okay, I can't do that with one hand. I'll just leave it here for now. We got the jack in there. Points to secure from. I got these, I think you get about four of them with the vehicle and then you can buy extra. Uh, visibility through the back, you know, <laughs> you got a big tire hanging out. Hey, you're not going to see much through the back. 
but that's with any car where the the wheels mounted uh, on the rear so yeah that's it um like subscribe let me know what you'd like to see uh, what you'd like me to do and uh, i'll tell you more about the build cheers bye